Hey Tiger fans, make sure you go follow the Clemson Insider for the best coverage of Clemson athletics and recruiting. Nobody does it better. Welcome to this uh, defensive line room when you got here and you see a bunch of potential NFL talent lined up. Well, you know, it felt really good. Um, you know, we, we were very talented. You know, I talked to Dabo uh, when we were, you know, talking about having this opportunity to take this job. And he told me, he's like, Coach, you're going to have the number one defensive line in the country. And uh, so I've seen that thus far, you know, this spring. Guys are working really hard and you know, uh, we're not, we don't even have Brzee out there, Trey Williams. Um, so it's going to be, I'm going to be feeling good about myself. I can keep them all healthy. You know, I may be up for the defense line coach of the year um, <laughs> if, they, if they all stay healthy and play well, man. But I got a, a great group of guys, great character guys in my room. Love them, like my own sons. And um, they're, they're really, they're leaders in themselves, leaders on this team. So um, I'm excited just to have the opportunity to coach them. I've heard you say you like to get out on the field and actually drill with your players, and, and Rook just told us he's still waiting for you to put those cleats on. Yeah, well, Rook doesn't know that I actually put on 80 pounds since last <laughs> summer. So um, I started a juice cleanse today, and I'm going to go vegan. You know, so I'll probably be the biggest vegan in Clemson. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I'm going to lose some weight. It's coming, though. I'm going to put the cleats on, and I do a little movement, just not as much as I've done in the past, but I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, it's funny that he would say that, of course. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I, I like to put the cleats on out there and demonstrate. I'll, I'll do some some little activation period, maybe some agiles and some ladders. But, you know, I'm not, you know, I may have like one or two plays in me, maybe run plays in between the hashes, and that'll be it. They say your feet are still pretty darn good. My feet move pretty well, you know. Uh, the indoor facility kills my back, but, you know, I can move it when I feel like it, you know. It's just that I don't really have to anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I coach now, but, you know. I can move a little bit still, so. How do you see players respond with you being that, you know, hands-on? How does that just change the dynamic for them? Well, I, I think, like, for me, um, I, th I think I spent the first month or so just getting to know my players, you know, as a new coach. Even though I'm a Clemson alumni and these guys have heard my name before, it's really important that they get to know me as a person. I get to know them as a person, and uh, that's where it starts. It, you have to build, that foundation has to be built off of that personal relationship of love and. And uh, you spend about a month of doing that, and then, you know, you can coach them hard. But um, if they don't have a level of respect or, or have a personal relationship with you, um, then that can become tough if you come here trying to lay down the hammer. So um, I just speak really the you know first couple months, man, and just really getting to know the guys, asking about their family life, where they're from. And those things are important. And it starts there, uh, just building that relationship. Uh, but the guys are responding really well. Um, they're really working really hard. Uh, I've challenged them in a lot of ways just to get technique and fundamentally sound. Um, and so we, we've kind of, uh, with, with, the, with the guidance of Wes, you know, at, at defensive coordinator Mickey, we've done things a little different, simplifying things so they can play fast, and, and they really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, I'm just really excited to be able to, you know, pass down the, the knowledge and things that I've learned over the years uh, as a former NFL player and as a former NFL coach. and and just pass that knowledge on so the guys can be successful. That's what matters to me. I found an interview you did back in 2018. Oh, really? And did you? And whoever was interviewing you asked you if Dabo called you and asked you to come back to coach, would you do it? And the interviewer didn't even finish. You didn't even let me finish. You immediately interrupted them and were like, yep, I would come back. That would be my dream job. Do you yeah. feel like now that you're here, you've kind of had that like pinch me moment? I um, just kind of can't believe that you You know what? I, yeah. You know, I think I, I was in a suit and a tie. I think I was in Greenville. <laughs> I was coaching for the Titans at the time, and uh, you know, um, it has been my dream job. Uh, I kind of tell you a little, kind of inside of how I got the job. You know, I was actually talking to a coach um, who uh, had an opportunity to be, uh, become the uh, defensive line coach at his alma mater, um, but he didn't get the job. Um, so he called me and was asking for some encouragement. Um, so I was talking to him, and I said, "Hey, man." The, Sometimes the timing just has to be right, you know, and I was telling him, I was like, hey, you know, I've always wanted to coach at Clemson, but I said, you know, they've been winning football games, national championships. I said, I have a lot of respect for Lamansky Hall and Todd Bates and the entire staff. I said, I love those guys. I said, you know, the, the, the timing for me hasn't been right. And I said, you know, well, maybe, you know, who knows the opportunity will come down the road. You never know. I hung up the phone and literally Dabo called me like 10 minutes later. Like I don't know where it scared me. I almost didn't answer my phone. I, I didn't really think he was calling, to, you know, offer me the job. And uh, you know, so so to be here, man, it's just a blessing. I, I really feel like, you know, uh, God really ordered my steps in order for me to be here 20 years later. And so I'm just excited, very humble um, for the experience, and really excited. I haven't even gotten around to all the people that I know that are still here. 
um, just because it's just been so overwhelming with everything. But uh, um, it's truly a blessing. When you say simplify things so guys can play faster, is that the defense as a whole or is it the defensive tackle position? Um, just as the defense as a whole. I think Wes and, and, and Mickey has done, done a really good job of just um, just kind of uh, simplifying things so guys can play faster. Just not putting too much on that plate. Um, this, you know, uh, you know, this defense is very complex. A um, lot of different looks, um, and so that's why they've been really successful over the years. And I thought, you know, Brent did a re really good job while I was here. Um, but Wes is, is is phenomenal. He's really really smart. You know, I, I didn't know Wes. Um, I, I've heard of him just because he spent some time in the NFL. So um, there's some guys who I know that I played with at Pittsburgh and I coached around that knew Wes. Um, but when I got here, I was really just, you know, blown away. Um, great, great person. Uh, couldn't find a better person, but he is really smart. He knows this defense in and out. And so I, I have a lot of respect for him. And he gained that respect for me in a matter of a couple of days, just, just sitting in the meeting room with him and just, you know, being able to absorb, absorb some of the knowledge that he has, man, it's, it's, it's out of this world. It's outstanding. Coach, uh, they had to rely on, on Peyton a little bit last year with the injuries, and mm -hmm. DeMonte was injured himself a little bit last year. What, what have you seen from those guys in their de oh, where they in their I, development? I would say Peyton Page is right at the top right now. He's having a really good spring. Um, he's done a really good job of losing some weight. I think when he got here, they told me he was about 390 pounds. Um, I think he's cutting his weight down to about 325, 330 now. Uh, so he's moving really well. He's one of the guys that's really caught my eye, being a young guy. Um, um, I'm expecting a lot of great things from him, man. Just got to continue to be consistent. Um, but he's done a really good job this spring on the field. Um, and it started with his just off-season conditioning and just his diet plan, man. He's worked really hard, so I'm really proud of him. And, um, you know, he's getting better every day, so I'm really excited for him. Cape Hart, as you mentioned, um, you know, just he's getting better, too. It's just the little things, just working on the technique and fundamentals of his play. I mean, he's a taller guy. You're always going to be talking to him about getting his pad level down. Um, but, man, he's done a tremendous job. He's getting really getting better um, every day. And so I've, I've just tried to challenge those young guys, give them a couple things to get better at, you know, not give them 10 to 15 things, but a couple things each day, man. They've really stepped up to the challenge. But I'm expecting big things from Cape Hart uh, and Peyton Page. I, I think it's going to be a really good year for them. And, you know, this is the biggest thing as defense line as a whole, just to stay healthy. Um, and, you know, and we can stay healthy and have all hands on deck, man. It's just, the sky's going to be the limit. Nick, how much did um, coaching at Auburn last year help you learn to be a college coach as opposed to being an NFL coach? Ooh, we, um, what a transition uh, coming from the pros and uh, stepping into the to the college ranks. Uh, and I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that I had uh, on the Coach Harrison and Coach Derek Mason giving me an opportunity to come, come to Auburn. I had some other NFL opportunities. Um, that were present at the time, and uh, you know I had a really good uh, relationship with Coach Mason. Uh, met him when I was at uh, the Tennessee Titans when he was the head coach at Vanderbilt, and uh, got into the college ranks. And uh, you know, guys, people were warning me. He's like, "Hey, man, that you know, guys that were in college, they were trying to get out of college, come to the pros." Like, "Hey, man, you know, that recruiting is something else." And I'm like, "Well, you know, I'm from a small town, with 62 people. You know, I have a lot of random conversations with people at Piggly Wiggly and IGA, so it can't be any any different from different than that. So um, I've adjusted to it really well. You know, the recruiting piece, I, I love talking to people um, and just trying to be my authentic self. You know, I don't you know put on a front or a show. I just like to show people who I really am and and uh, get to know them as well and hear their story um, because I've I've experienced so much in life. You know, I thought I'd be the perfect coach because I've dealt with it all. You know, I didn't grow up in a in a household with with two two parents, and um, I experienced a lot of adversity. I lost my mom, I lost my grandmother, parents. All my parents are actually deceased uh, now. I lost my grandmother last year uh, over the summer, and so uh, I've experienced a lot. You know, here at Clemson, um, my experience here, my experience in the pros. You know, as a player and as a coach, and I I felt that it would be a great fit for me, and it was. And so um, I really gained the hearts you know, the players that I coached there at Auburn. And uh, they were so close to me um, that, you know, I had a, actually had a conversation with them um, before I took this job to make sure they were going to be okay with me leaving. Um, it was a really exciting opportunity for me. But in this business, man, you become, you know, not just a coach, but you become like these kids' parents or uh, uh, a very uh, important person, a part of their life. And so 
uh, for me, it, it's it's uh, it's been an easy transition for me, and I'm I'm, in, I'm loving it. Rook and TD said that you've taught that group about every hand combat move that there is. <laughs> uh, just w what's what, can you give a little bit about what your coaching philosophy is and sort of how you came up with it over the years? Um, you know what the thing that I've done is like I don't know everything as a D line coach, man. I've absorbed a lot of information from high school coaches. Um, I've even taken some of my football drills from from soccer coaches. And uh, so I don't know it all, and I think that's what makes me different, man. I learn things from a lot of different people. Um, I've had an opportunity to go out and speak at Glazer Clinics, and I pulled high school coaches aside and had an opportunity uh, just to kind of pick their brains, man. So I've, I've, I've taken in a lot of information. I've been around a lot of great coaches uh, during my time in Denver, uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and playing in Arizona. So I've been a lot of, around a lot of different coaches and did a good job of taking notes and, and learning a lot of different things. and, and uh, you know, defensive line is really about having good hands and feet, and uh, and it's 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 a violent, a violent position, all right. And so, um, in terms of the hand combinations, that's come from me taking hop keto, um, taking boxing lessons. You know, when I was out uh, in Arizona, I played for the Cardinals. I actually trained with a trainer that had trained Mike Tyson. So, um, you know, I, I've kind of you know pieced it all together. I watch YouTube videos. A lot of people think like. You know, guys are creating things. You go on YouTube, it'll show you a lot of different, you know, combinations. So I've just taken all of that in and just just absorbed a lot of information from a lot of good coaches around me and just kind of brought it all together. And I use drills that can really carry over into what we're doing defensively. And so uh, it's been really good. Um, so they've, they've had a lot, they've learned a lot of new things uh, with me being here, but they've adjusted to it well. And I think the biggest thing is just me having some consistency with what I'm doing. And so they can kind of measure uh, themselves, you know, as we continue the drills to get better. What's a soccer drill that goes to football? <laughs> uh, really, uh, it would be a ladder. Um, I, I think um, I would tell you a story. Like when I was here, when we had the old facility, some of the fastest feet I ever saw was some of the women's uh, soccer team, you know, um, moving through ladders. I was just blown away. It was just, I was like, wow, you know. Um, so soccer players have, you know, tremendous. Uh, uh, twitchiness in terms of their footwork it's out of this world you know and so you know I started studying what kind of ladder drills and footwork drills they were doing it was very similar to what football players you know were doing as well so um, just a lot of different ladder, ladder combination icky shuffle in and out hip twists I can go on and on the list goes forever so I'm um, just really uh, grateful for um, just having an opportunity like I say to learn from you know sports soccer you know so I think that's something that Oh, you're good, Matt. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think that's something that's helped you is just pulling from so many different avenues and going throughout your coaching career? Yes. Um, you know, um, I've, so I was here. I had two defensive line coaches here. I had, uh, um, uh, let's see, well, actually, I was an outside linebacker before I ate myself into the defensive tackle. <laughs> <room. laughs> um, but I, um, you know, I, I had Brick Haley was my outside linebacker's coach, and then they brought in Thylen Smith. Um, from when Tommy Bowden got here, and then I went out to Denver. I had Jacob Bernie, um, who was a longtime d uh, defensive line coach in the NFL. I left there, and then I was with Romeo Cannell, who was a defensive line coach, but he was my head coach in Cleveland, and Randy Melvin. Then I went to John Mitchell when I was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then um, I, I, my last coach, God forgive me if he's watching this interview, I, don't, I forgot his name, but. But, but in Arizona, so I've had about six or seven defensive line coaches. So it's a, a combination of all of them that, that just been great. And then when I got into coaching, uh, I worked with Joe Cullen, who's been, uh, you know, a, a known very good uh, defensive line coach on the NFL for many, many years. Just recently was with um, the Jacksonville Jaguars as the defensive coordinator is now out uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs, I think. And so he's there. And I worked with Giff Smith, who has spent a lot of time in college. So. I've, I've accumulated a lot of different things, and even just going to coaching clinics, learning from some of the coaches that's, you know, coaching the collegiate level as well for a long time. So um, I've just kind of pulled it all in, yeah, you know, together. So it's been great. Dabo mentioned wanting someone with NFL experience. Mm -hmm. just what are the biggest things that you can share with these guys about what they need to know when they make that transition? I think uh, for me, um, the first thing they needed to know, just the, talking about the character piece and the evaluation piece outside this building. Um, you know, I, I've, I've tried to explain to guys when it comes to the NFL, that evaluation period starts as soon as you step foot on this campus. Um, you know, scouts are here uh, years ahead of time. They're talking to the academic counselors. They're talking to training room staff. They're, you know, they're talking to local police, just trying to get as much information on you as they can. And I've, I've you know, spent uh, nine years there as a coach, so I've seen the reports. 
And it's just amazing the amount of information they, they get on a particular player that's at the draft because they're going to invest millions of dollars into this, this, this player. And so I've talked to them about that, man, just making sure that, you know, they understand that everything, everything you do matters. Going to class matters. Um, how you treat people matters. Um, and so those little things matter, um, you know, every day. And so then just talk to them about just working hard, you know, just putting in the hard work and, and really having an understanding that in order to, to play at that next level, you know, you have to be willing to sacrifice things that people aren't willing to sacrifice. Um, you know, getting extra sleep, you know, not going out and partying, you know, um, just, just keeping yourself, you know, in places around people that's trying to go where you're trying to get. And so, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of information for that and I think they've absorbed that. I challenge them also. I mean, we have one of the best, we have the best facility probably in the country, I'm assuming, uh, I, would, I would say so. Um, and then we, we're actually, you know, even getting better and upgrading our, our training room facility, but we have a place called the Castle, man. There's, you know, we got Cairo th Chambers in there, massage therapists, um, float tanks, you know, whatever tank you name it, we have it, you know. And so I told guys, I challenged them, like, man, guys, you have an opportunity to have this, and it's for free. In the pros, you have to pay for the massage therapist. You have to pay to get in the car uh, chamber. Um, you have to pay to get in the float bubble. You might spend forty to fifty thousand dollars on your body a year with acupuncture and yoga and everything else. You're here at Clemson. You can you can prepare to be a, be a pro by just being the best Clemson Tiger that you can possibly be. And uh, you know they have everything they need here. And so I, I really, especially in the defensive line with all the injuries we had, just challenge guys, man, to to be more. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, preactive, you know, in, in terms of uh, just make sure you do the things you need to do to prevent, you know, go preventive, you know, measures and, and, and do things ahead of time so you don't get hurt. And that that comes with taking advantage of our castle that we have here and our training room, getting in the cold tub, stretching at night, sleeping, you know, putting the right things in your body. So those things are really important. So when you got the job, did you have any of those guys come to you and ask specifically, you know, what, what do I need to do to get to the next level? What can I, I, do I, that? I think, um, they they have asked. I think I probably talked so much that they kind of didn't give them a chance to, to ask. Um, but but you know I've had guys come in. Brzee, he was one of the first that's been around. He's been, he was around me a lot. You know in my office every day, just just kind of talk to him about it. Cause you know these guys are gonna, all of them are gonna have an opportunity to play at the next level. And um, you know so I, I I've just you know I talked to him about it as soon as I got here. But like I said, you know I think it was important that. You know, hey, how you doing? My name is Nick Easton. I'm from Lyons, Georgia. You know, I grew up in a town of 3,000 people, and I had 62 people in my graduation class. Yeah. Where are you from? You know, <laughs> and so those are the things that were important to me when I first got here. But those conversations about, you know, uh, what they need to do to get to the next level probably came two or three weeks later. So, how is he coming along? And when you watch, I know you haven't seen him yeah. personally, but when you watch film and stuff, studying him, just what stands out about him? Oh man, just just he's a very physical football player, athletic. Twitchy, um, you know he's uh, he can do it all. You know, he's all three down you know, player. He's very competitive. Uh, he wants to win. He wants to be great. He wants to be the best. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, man, he's so eager to get back. I mean, I, I I text him the other day. I said, man, I know it's I know what it feels like to watch. I told my Achilles when I was here, um, right before the Gator Bowl, was get ready to play uh, down in Jacksonville. So I said, I told him, I said, I know what it feels like to watch, man, but just be patient. So I'm going to need you when we go to down to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech, you know. So uh, you know he's just been so eager, but he's been very uh, involved in the meetings, in our walkthroughs. You know, he got out there on the walkthrough. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to let you get a rep, but you better not go full speed. You know, I'm going to take you out. <laughs> so, but he's he's been he's been really really good for our room and just really encouraging the other guys, while at the same time making sure he's staying in that in the, in the training room. Uh, strengthening, you know, all the things he needs to strengthen, and uh, he's going to be great. Coach, when you first got to the NFL, I don't think it was really easy for you. No. What were you dealing with mentally at that time? Oh man, it was a lot of stuff. I mean, um, I think it was, a, you know, I, I moved far away from home, and and uh, you know, first time I've been away from my, my family. Um, I probably just, I think I hated football. I think I probably hated all my coaches too <laughs> at the time, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I had a, I just, it was just so much in my mind at the time. I was, I was miserable. And, uh, you know, I, I just had, I went through a huge adjustment, as you know, uh, during that period of time, man. It had a lot of maturing to do. I thought I was mature. I mean, I was a, you know, defensive team, team, team captain here for a couple of years, man. I went out there and, you know, I, I just, I, at the time, I don't think I was a fit for what they were doing. And, uh, 
you know, I, I kind of, you know, took it upon myself to take a couple of vacation days while I was there, and, uh, you know, it, it ended up being the worst decision of my life, I think. Uh, I was talking to, I was talking, I'd use that as a story, you know, I, I left training camp, and uh, people thought I was missing. As a matter of fact, there was a basketball player that was, uh, uh, I think, at Baylor that was missing at the time. I think it may have ended up uh, deceased and was dead. And so my everybody was calling me and stuff. And I was like, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm a fourth round draft pick. Nobody cares. But I realized, like, you're in the NFL. Everybody cares. Everybody wants to know. But, you know, I just I took a couple days off and decided to come back and talk to my team, talk to my teammates and uh, came back and, uh, Ended up playing for 11 years, so it worked out, I guess. You know. Did you go home to think? That's all. Yeah, just, yeah didn't go home, but I, you know, took a little vacation. Yeah, yeah I did some space. That's all. Um, but but it, it was good. I, I'm I'm thankful that you know. I look back on everything that I that happened to my career, even being here, tearing my Achilles, and that situation, the things I went through. It all just worked out for my good in the end. You know, and uh, that's just a, another one of those teaching moments for me to with with, with my with my players to pass on the information. Like, hey guys, listen here. Coach ain't always been perfect. I made some mistakes in life, man. But, you know, um, if you just keep pressing, keep pushing, man, and stay focused, man, good things will come out on the other side. Nick, you, you mentioned simplifying. When, when you take over a group mm -hmm. that has this much talent and experience, do you yeah. have to be careful not to overcoach? I guess if, that, if that's a thing. No, um, I mean, I, I think um, we're talking about simplifying. I, I, I think for me it's just giving them, like, our goals for this spring was, like, three things. Yeah. You know, it just it might have been footwork, you know, um, yeah, directional steps and hands, yeah. you know. I didn't want to give – seen a lot more than that, but if I gave us 15 different goals, you know, we might not ever accomplish any of them. So I wanted to just focus in on those those three little attention to details with, with the uh, – you know, have a 3.0 as a group or a GPA plus or better, mm -hmm. you know, with that leading with the educational part of it, and then just focusing on three different things, and I think – that guys feel like we've accomplished something, but I couldn't give them 15 different goals. I don't think we have enough time to accomplish all of them. So when I talk about simplifying, I'm just talking about getting getting good at those three different things. And I think guys can see themselves, you know, progress each day because we're just doing the same thing over and over and over. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned, uh, especially when I played in Pittsburgh. You know, I always refer back to them because we, you know, I, I played on a really really good defense that was in like number one in a lot of different categories for five years and. And one of those reasons why John Mitchell, who's my defensive line coach, man, we we did the same things every day, repetitive, and you know, we became creatures of habit. And as I look back, you know, I can say like, well, what's the best? What was the best time of my career? That I played the best technique, and it was in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And we did like three to four different things. They they were so boring to me, but I look back on them and I was like, man, that's why we were really good mm -hmm. because we we did the same things every day over and over until we perfected it, you know. And so there's been time early in my career. When I was a coach, and you know, they have all these, you know, trainers who do all the different drills on, you know, YouTube and Instagram, you know, jumping over the bags, this, that, and the third. And so I said, man, you know, uh, in, in, in the beginning of my career, I started doing that too. And then I was like, well, this ain't really carrying over to what we're doing. So I went back to the basics, man. I've seen my guys get better over time. So that's been truly awesome. Talk about the complexity of this Clemson defense. You mm -hmm. played obviously under Dick LeBeau and yeah. Ray Horton. I mean, how does yeah. it compare in terms of complexities? I, it's the same. Um, and one thing that I've learned is about you know, you know, at the end of the day, man, it's going to go back to old school, you know, football. You know, and uh, cover two is cover two, cover one is cover one, cover three is cover three. It is what it is, right? Um, but as you go to different levels, the terms change, the adjustments change. And so that's 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 kind of what it's been for me. It's just learning a new terminology. Um, but a three four is a three four. A four three is a four three. Doesn't change. But you know, people have learned to kind of make their own adjustments and add names to it over time. And anybody that has success is the guru for that particular defense. And so, but you know, football is going to be football, and it's it's remained the same for over time. It's just it's just a terminology that's changed. But we're just as complex as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, it's just different terminology, different name. Did you come back for any big games in Death Valley over the years? I have not. That's a really good question, man. <laughs> you know, um, I have not been back to a game. So this would be uh, Death Valley and Clemson a little unrecognizable to you, and how much it's grown. In oh the my years. goodness, <laughs> it's changed so much. Um, this whole entire place. I, I think the West End Zone pro just it maybe started a couple years after I got drafted, and, yeah. and then all of a sudden this monster of a facility uh, popped up as well. And so, man, it's. It's changed so much that even the city of Clemson has changed. I mean, in the last 20 years, I mean, all the development and 
things are everywhere. But Death Valley, man, it's just it's just out of this world. The locker room, it's just it's amazing. And I, I think that's just you know Dabo and our athletic department, our ads, Ipte, you know they've done a really good job, man, of just raising the funds to to make this place just so special, you know. But like I've said before, and uh, just like you know, you can have the best facilities in the world. Uh, and have some of the worst people, man. But we have some of the best best people in these buildings, and that's what makes this place special. Did you say you put on eight pounds or eighty pounds? Man, does it look like eight? Who <laughs> <laughs> answered that question? Do mm-hmm. you think it's eight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, you're a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> what was the main well, culprit in putting on eighty pounds? Man, you know what? I'll be honest with you. So I, when we started, when COVID hit in 2020, in spring, right? So I was like, okay, this is going one either way. I'm like, I'm already 370 pounds. I'm like, this could be bad. So I was like, I'm going to go vegan, you know. Uh, so I went vegan while I was there and um, just started walking. And I, I lost 80 pounds. And, and I was doing really good. And so last summer, uh, you know, I lost my roommate, Eltro Bodrick, uh, that was a really good friend of mine that played safety here. He passed suddenly from a heart attack. So I'm an emotional eater. And then my grandmother... I uh, had a heart attack uh, while I was on, on vacation last year. And so that was, you know, she ended up living like two and a half months later. And I was driving back and forth from Auburn twice a week, three and a half hours there and back. Uh, just to spend time with her, man. So I just kind of, she loved, she loved food. And so I've been eating for her since she's been gone. But, you know, I got on a scale the other day. I was like, okay, enough's enough. So I actually started a juice cleanse, cleanse today. So I'm feeling really good, you know, and, and right you, now. And you're going vegan again? Yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, if I continue to eat, I'll be at Max. I'll be at, you know, Pixies and Bills, County Corners, and Traditions on the Lake, and McDonald's, and yeah, all that stuff. So I ate all that stuff this last week and kind of laid it to rest. You know, I had a own burial for all the bad things I eat, like Reese Cups, Snickers, you know, Zebra Cakes. You know, do you like Zebra Cakes? Oh, oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. your pain. Talk about burials. I saw that you have funeral director books in your office when were you thinking about being a funeral oh, man how did you see that what nah uh so so i i had a good friend of mine in high school um whose grandfather owned a funeral home back in my, near my hometown and uh i kind of took an int- not an interest to the body part of it just the business and uh you know thought it would be an idea so i actually went to uh, american McAllister institute uh, for funeral directing services while i was coaching for the tennessee titans and uh did a couple semesters there, so I'm not done yet, but uh, at some point in time, I'm going to finish that, and uh, that's going to be like my my little, I don't want to call it a hobby. That'll be my like entrepreneurship <laughs> business, you know, when I'm done coaching, so yeah. But I'm not weird. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you so much.